Hi everybody, Susie Q here at Q Aquatics. And welcome to Tuesday's Tanks. Today I'm going to be going over my 20 gallon pea puffer tank. Let's take a look. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this clearly, but there is a lot of hair algae in this tank. And I think it's because of the red light that was left on for two days while I was away. That was my bad. It's not connected to the uh, timer. So this is my pea puffer tank. And I'm going to be doing a little, I'll be doing, I'm going to cleaning out this tank. This is our Tuesday's tank. I think I'm going to start by removing any hair algae I can. Maybe I should start by feeding them so they don't nip at me. They don't hurt, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up with tank water. So anything I wash off is going to be in tank water, not in chlorinated water. Uh, I could have done without the duckweed. Maybe I'll get a good chance of uh, this doesn't feel like it's 78 degrees. Yep, it is. Some of my tanks are warmer than others, so it's weird. Um, I, so I'm going to show you how I feed them. I love these little guys. They, they get mostly snails and bloodworms. And I'll grab a little thing of bloodworms and hold them here. I keep them in the tweezers and I make them pull it out. So here they go. They grab it out of there and they each pull a blood worm out. Oh, one or two fell, so somebody gets freebies, but yep. It, and that usually keeps down the fighting. But if they fall to the ground, it seems like even if ten fall, they all fight over the same blood worm. <laughs> this guy's a little chunky. Let me tell you, these guys are so personable. They're so personal. Huh. So I'm going to take care of that hair algae in the back. Um, I'm going to start with... That's like a big chunk of it. And I don't know if I should pull this plant out and try to fix it with peroxide. I might do that. I'm not going to put peroxide in the tank because I don't know how sensitive these puffers are. But I will pull out this plant. But I'm going to try to get as much of the hair algae as I can. Huh. I love the bulbitis in here. I really do love this. Very hardy, hardy plant. There's also uh, a blue goby in here. And uh I bought them all together from the same tank and they just seem to have grown up together and they don't bother each other so I'm real happy about that. I think I might pull out this Anubis because I can't tell where's all this algae coming from. And it seems to only be on this Anubis so. I wonder why it's only on this Anubis. I increased the water flow. That didn't help. Huh. I don't know. But maybe that's not where it's originating from, but I'll find out. I'm going to pull out this castle. The castle I'll probably scrub down. Not in tank water, but in tap water. There's some on there. The first time this castle has ever been removed. Make sure there's nothing attached. <laughs> Oh, there is. Bulbitis is growing on it. Oh, how funny is that? I didn't realize that plants would grow on plastic. Oh, and there's a big rhizome from another Anubis. Cool. I'll get this all cleaned up now that I know there's nothing on here. 
nobody in here. <laughs> I'm going to dip my plants into this hydrogen peroxide solution with the tank water. Uh, I got a sponge filter, hang on the back filter, two sponge filters, hang on the back filter. So do you guys have pea puffers? I'm going to scrape the sides and everything because I feel, normally I don't feel anything, but now I feel something on the tank. And normally I don't, so. Because we should be seeing a neon blue goby. I think she's female because she's not that neon. That's another thing I got. Duh. Let's get that piece out. Um, oh my, my brain. Hey guys. So once I get this all cleaned off, I'll do a water change. I'll put some of these plants back in. This was just, did a good dip with the uh, hydrogen peroxide mix. I gotta watch this cylinder real closely. Usually the puffers don't get caught up in there, but when they do... So this is what I put in most of my hang in the backs. It makes it very affordable, very easy to change out all the time. I, I'm, now I'm gonna dechlorinate the water. I actually use prime, but this is I just put it in here because I get prime by the gallon. When I get pea puffers, I quarantine them like I do all the other ones, but the puffers. I always medicate. My other quarantines I only watch unless I see something wrong. But my puffers, I just naturally assume that they have parasites. So I like to give them lots of hiding places in case they start getting irritated with each other. They have plenty of places to hide. And if ever they ever want to spawn, I want to make sure they're, I'm ready for them. So these are my pea puffers. I got a lot of decor in this tank, but I also have a lot of live plants. I got swords, crypts, bulbitis, ludwigia. I want to say there's jungle val in the back and hair grass. Not the dwarf hair grass, but hair grass. Two sponge filters hang on back. So they grab a blood worm and it seems like, I could be wrong, but it seems like they suck the inside out and then they spit out the casing. But that's a, this one is swimming around with the little hollowed out blood worm in her mouth. That's what I do. I could watch these guys for hours and hours. Thanks for checking out Tuesday's Tanks, guys. See you next time.